Welcome back to Sport on 7. I'm Tom Bushell. So the Emirates Dubai Rugby 7s enjoyed record crowds and a weekend of sunshine, unlike the rain last time. Uh, of course, uh, whilst there over the weekend, I caught up with uh, some famous faces of rugby. Uh, first of all, the former Scotland international picking up 31 caps for his country. Rory Lawson spoke to me. Right, well, the atmosphere, of course, at the Emirates Dubai Rugby Sevens is second to none, and you see so many legends of the game as well. I haven't found one here, but this is Roy Lawson. 31 caps for Scotland in his time, of course, and now part of our coverage of the Sevens. And what a great weekend it is, Rory. It's been fantastic. The, the atmosphere around the ground, the rugby on shore on the front, the main pitch and the back pitch is absolutely phenomenal, showcasing what is an unbelievable game. And the Knights, yet yeah, young, there's still a lot more rugby to come, and it's just been awesome. Absolutely, of course, you've experienced many big atmospheres in your playing days at the likes of, of course, Murray Field. But how does this compare to big international test atmospheres? I think the difference with this is that it's a big party, multinational, multicultural, fancy dress all around the ground. And as a result, everyone is just here for a good time. They'll pick a side to cheer for, even if it's not their country, and they will give it everything for them. And the, the, the buzz around the ground as a result is fantastic. The top teams are loving it. But for me, it's the fact that you get under 18s out there. We've just seen the French winning French team from the international under 18s celebrating with the Agreco Dynamo cheerleaders, which has been my highlight of the tournament so far. Absolutely, of course. Are you ever tempted, not long retired, but when you come to tournaments like this to get the boots back on? It certainly gives you the, the itch. You want to get out there again, and you know, you never say never. There's a few years down the line, maybe I kind of feel I'm in this middle ground, too old to be a youngster and too young to be an old vet. So I'll uh, we'll wait and see what happens over the next. But just now, I'm just loving being here. Absolutely, it's a great event, and of course, let's talk about Scotland very briefly as well. How do you find that the Scotland seven teams have gone this weekend? Yeah, well, we spoke to uh, Colin Gregor, an old chum of mine, who's captain of the side, and he was. They were really disappointed today because ultimately they had a really good day yesterday. They beat Australia and Spain, lost narrowly to Wales, and they were in the cup today. And just a couple too many mistakes against Fiji earlier, and then in the, in the semi-final of the play against Argentina has been the difference between them fighting for silverware and heading on to South Africa disappointed. Absolutely. Well, Rory, thanks for speaking to me. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will. Thank you. Rory Lawson there and his colourful sunglasses. Now, another man I spoke to uh, was a former Sevens legend and the highest point scorer in the history of the HSBC World Sevens series. Ben Golling spoke to me overlooking pitch two. Well, as we've said on the show this evening, of course, you always bump into legends of the rugby game here at the Emirates Dubai Rugby Seven, and Ben Gollings is certainly uh, one of those. What is it, the world record for highest points scored in the HSBC World Seven Series? That's impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I managed to uh, break Wysali's record in about uh, 2005 six, I think, So uh, and kept kicking on from there. So it's, and I, having uh, played for as long as I did, it's nice to have an accolade at the end of the day. Absolutely, of course, a great playing career and great to be back here. You're having a good weekend this time around. Yeah, I mean, it's very different to what I'm used to. It's kind of taken a while to adapt, I think. I'm used to being in the changing room, focusing, getting ready to play out here. Now, it's, it's so relaxing and uh, it's really enjoyable to be able to be a part of the event from a different side and just sit in the stand and, and, and watch some of the games play and then and then see something I've never seen, which is the, you know, the festival that happens outside. You can see it happening behind us and the games going on on the other field. You know, for me, you never saw this when you were playing because you were so focused on what was actually you know, ahead of you. So I'm really enjoying my experience in Dubai this year. One of those conversations which we've been having on air on the radio over the last couple of days, if what, the, what is the players, what do they do between games? Because some of them will have three, four hours to, to chill out. Will they go back to the hotel? Will they stay here? What did you used to do? Well, it's interesting, you know, because especially here in Dubai, now that they've moved the field out a lot further away from town, the option to go back to the hotel means to say it's about an hour each way on the bus. And so now they've decided, you know, it's not worth it. But they've got great facilities here, air-conditioned changing rooms, so the guys get out of the sun because it is blistering out here at the moment. And there's also, uh, in the background as well, there's a great building where they can get in the shade, go and grab some food. And it's just a matter of getting off your feet. A lot of teams, you know, what you don't want to do is get absorbed into what we see behind us again because <laughs> if you do, that could, uh, could cause a few issues when you get out on the field. But, you know, it's, they, they get to see a bit of it from the stands otherwise it's changing rooms relax music on 
get ready, get focused. And for you nowadays, is it nice to come here and, and bump into former colleagues as well? So many people, former players that used to play rugby at a high standard now like to come here and enjoy the atmosphere. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's blown me away actually this year, like how much bigger this event's actually got. And then seeing it's, it's, I mean, you could pick some serious world 15s of the old players mm. that, are, that are floating around <laughs> here in Dubai in disguise. It, it, really is a, it really is a showcase. And final one for me, of course, the final's still to come later on tonight. But who's really impressed you? Of course, the Kiwis looking fantastic. England looking very good as well. Absolutely, I think the you know the four semi-finalist teams in South Africa, England, Fiji, and New Zealand. They definitely are the standout teams for this tournament. Both are going to be heavily four semi-finals. Um, you know, I'd really love to see probably an England, England, New Zealand final. Um, but you never know. You never know in this game. So it's, they're going to be exciting. Absolutely, Ben. Thank you for your time today, and good to see you in Dubai as well. Thank you very much. Now, that's it for part two of Sport on 7. Uh, we are back in a moment, though, with the likes of David Coulthard on Sport on 7. See you in just a minute.